Hello everybody, good day to you. We are returning to the part two of this Mercury slash Ford Explorer slash Mountaineer. The Mountaineer and the Explorer were the same SUV, just a different brand name on it. So we got a Ford Explorer slash Mercury Mountaineer. Uh, we started off, or finished off in the last video, at the end of a disassembly phase. Uh, what we had done, Dave and I tag team this uh, particular board, but we pulled off the front lower control arms front upper control arms you see we've got the spindle and the brakes just kind of dangling down all willy-nilly like and looks like my uh exhaust or uh, exhaust my brake caliper hanger finally gave way this is supposed to be a hook that's why i used two so this thing didn't fall off and tear the uh the hose off of it uh anyway we pulled the front end off of it we pulled the steering gear out of it the steering gear is going to ride right here in this area uh, once that guy was removed, we pulled the engine oil pan off of it and we pulled off this oil filter housing slash coolant hose adapter right there with the filter screws on because the gasket behind that unit was leaking. And uh, we left off uh, pretty much at the end of disassembly, like I said. We've got parts trickling in, so we're going to pick back up where we left off and we're going to perform the disassembly procedure uh, in reverse order. So we're gonna get this gasket installed. We're gonna to torque that housing down. Then we're gonna fetch the oil pan out of the parts washer over yonder, grab its gasket, set that oil pan back in, tighten that down, torque it up, and put a new drain plug in it because the old one was leaking. And then I'm gonna go back to uh, the uh, suspension reassembly. Now for this side, I've got a lower control arm, an upper control arm. The other side over here, we have the lower in already. Dave was working this side. We've got the upper in already. What we don't have here, sorry, the lower. What we do not have is the upper. So this thing's just kind of hanging out with bungee cords and uh, more little hook, hook devices until that other component shows up. Uh, the Motocraft upper control arms, which are Ford parts, uh, they were the kind of special order and they were not exactly in town. We've got one that arrived and this is the one for my side. Uh, but Dave is still waiting on his and everybody's waiting on me because while Dave was putting this together uh, I was somewhere doing other things. So now I'm in catch-up mode So I'm gonna finish where I left off or pick up where I left off and we're gonna start back in on this engines oil system So stay tuned because this is gonna be a very good part two video Okay, so we need to go ahead and get uh, get started here. I want to start by getting this gasket slipped up into position where it belongs. So we've got four fasteners here, and I'm gonna try to maneuver this as best as I can. We still have some drip action taking place here, so there's a bunch of nasty kind of raining down on top of my cranium. So I want to get through this kind of quick. I can stop getting rained on by my junk here. I've got this bass backwards too. Flip it around. Please go in there. There we go. So what I'm gonna do, we'll get one of the fasteners in. Then we're gonna line it up with its bolt hole and just get the thread started. See that? It's gonna locate the gasket and the housing Grab our second bolt, move the gasket, line it up, pick another hole, thread it in. Uh-oh, I'm losing it. My threads were not started very well on the that first hole. Here, let's try this. Now you can probably see Give this thing some flangey reach around business and drop it. Boom. Trying again. Once I get them started, I can go in there with a swivel and a socket. Go ahead and run these down and apply some clamping force. We've got to get them started first. Okay, that's three. And the fourth one, that's actually going to be found on top of the hose, so none of us can see it. But I can kind of feel it. Once we get through this, 
we're gonna pick up the pace a little bit because the oil pan is gonna be super easy. And then we're just gonna go back to uh, back to the suspension work here. Okie dokes, 13 on an extension on a wobble because we love the wobbly bits. got to go around the front side of the engine to get that uh, top bolt. Bear with me folks because I know y'all can't see. Dick. One more. Where's that last one? How about that? No, this one? Is that it? Yeah, that was it. Okay, so we got them run down with the little impact, but we need some more torque. So going back in, and I've got the, uh, the manual regular ratchet on this little setup here, and that'll give me some... Uh, some greater torque values. See how the palm is open? If you go to apply some torque, you got a closed palm and your ratchet slips or your socket slips off, you'll end up punching things. But if you open palm it, if anything slips, you do not have any uh, biological components in the way to absorb the impact. Great way to not get hurt. Ah, see that? Look what I did. Slipped the socket off. It wasn't on straight. That could have been a knuckle punching, busting moment right there. And we try to avoid those. Okay, that's three torqued a little bit. Let me go back around and get that other, uh, other one up top. Okay, that one's on. go nice tight okay so we have successfully managed to replace that gasket up there so I can go ahead and plug in this old pressure sender and then we'll fetch the filter and screw that on as well let us apply a slight amount of lubricant to the o-ring here because that filter housing is dry and there is no oil left on it Put that guy right around there like so. Beautiful. So we come on up through the through the frame here. And right back there is our housing. See the threads? Let's go ahead and screw this guy on. filter click there we go okay I've just pulled the pan out of the parts washer it's nice and shiny inside gave it a good wipe down got all the sludge out from the bottom of the oil pan still a little bit of fluid in there yep we got it gave it a good wipe down let's go ahead and make sure that this gasket matches up and is correct and I believe it's gonna go just like so or maybe Oh, it's gonna go like that. It's got these little tabs here that are supposed to hug the, uh, the side of the pan. I guess that's to locate it. Okay, so that's all in good shape. These line up, 16 holes, 16 bolts. We need to grab some sealant because we need a small bead of sealant up here on the engine at the areas where we transition from the block to the rear cover and the front cover. There's a slight little gap there. And if you fail to put some sealant on that little gap, it could serve as a path for oil to leak. And we're trying to stop oil leaks, not, uh, not cause them. Oh, sealant gravity. So yeah, real simple. We just go in there, put a little dime, dime size bead on the area, just like so. And that'll seal up those little gaps in there. So now, 
I need to wipe my hand off because it's filthy. And we'll grab the pan and the bolts and get that thing set up into position. Okay, pan's coming in. Gasket is sitting on top of the pan. We need to squeeze it under this piece of wiring harness here. Slide it up into its approximate position. And I'm gonna put one bolt in on this side, actually two, uh, just to kind of locate the pan so it's not at an angle. And then we'll go around the other side, hang two more bolts. Then we'll run through and put the remainder of them in. There we go. And then we'll torque them all down to specified specifications. I'm taking care to not push this thing all the way up against the sealant because I don't want to smear it around just yet. Uh, more fasteners here. Cool. That one's hard to reach the threads. There's a piece of wire in the way for the hose or that cooler line or whatever. Let's get the front one in. Here. And we're just going to go all the way around the perimeter until each fastener is threaded in. Okay, skipping ahead a little bit, ready to rock and roll. I have all of the perimeter fasteners in, so let's go ahead and run these down. That way our sealant gets uh, sealed into position and the pan will be fully uh, fully seated. We can let all that sealant cure up. I don't want to put oil in it while it's still wet because it'll, it, it might wash it away. This is not final torque. This is just preliminary torque to mate the surfaces. I'll come through with a little clicky wrench later. Yeah, get that one on there. Come on, universal socket. This one's a extra weeby wobbly wobble socket. Two on the side back here. There. Come on. Come on. Brand new sockets, so they're actually very tightly fitting. Okay, a couple in the back. And then we'll go up front and get the remainders. I know you guys can't see in there, it's dark. Sorry. I'm on a kind of a time crunch. I don't want the sealant to set up. And again, more importantly, I don't want the sealant to uh, get oil on it and then not seal that would be even worse. How do I get that front one like this? Ah, come on. Okay, that's all the perimeter bolts in position. And you guys could barely even see the camera fell down. But yeah, we got all the perimeter bolts in position. So now I need to put the drain plug in. We're gonna spray it off, torque those bolts down. And then uh, we're probably gonna go ahead and grab the steering gear out of the box and then hang that next. Over on the floor here, we have the replacement remanufactured steering gear. It's been rebuilt. Uh, what that means is, uh, for example, we'll use this one right here. This old unit with the wear and the leaks and the worn out components is going to be shipped back to a core buyer. That core buyer is going to take this thing, clean it up, disassemble it, reseal it, measure everything internally, and anything that is a faulty component is going to be removed and replaced. And then they will take it after they repair it. They will refinish it, rebox it, and send it out to uh, rejoin the circle of life of automotive components. 
So that's what we have here. We've got a remanufactured unit and we're gonna now take this guy, set it over into the vehicle and get it installed. Uh, I had to install the grommets in this unit because they didn't come with it. That's the bushings and grommets and whatnot. And I also have already installed the replacement O-rings that are going to connect to the fluid line ports uh, in, in the rack right over here. So let's take this unit, run it on over to the chassis and get it into position. Okay, steering gear is coming in. Set that up on top of you guys over there. Let her hang out right here like so, and we can connect the fluid lines. We've moved back around to the driver's side. Now this steering gear is not secured to anything. It's just kind of sitting on the bolts and on the control arm, but we've got enough, enough here to make our connections on our hydraulic lines. We have enough space. That's what I'm saying. We have enough space. Uh, and again, I have already gone ahead and changed the O-ring seals on, on these lines right here. And if you don't believe me, uh sorry can't do anything for you i did it i said i did it just because it's not on camera doesn't mean it didn't happen so so there there's that the uh the same concept is also going to apply to torquing down the uh the bolts on the oil pan i did that when you guys weren't looking also and if you don't believe me i can't really help you so, so there. This looks like it's gonna be kind of fun to put together. I don't really know how I got this apart, but I knew I had a, a socket on there, but how did I find the space? It must have been because I was tugging on the line earlier and now the line is tugging on the steering gear. Let's try to jam this in. There we go. All out of threads. Go in there with a bigger one. Mix. Okay. Give it back. Thank you. All right, that guy, the lines are bolted on, so now we can get this gear oriented properly and we'll bolt it to the, uh, the frame. Okay, down at the bottom, or under the oil pan again, we've got our two big bolts, and those are gonna go through the, uh, the bushings here on the actual steering gear. Now, at the other side, gravity, the other side they're gonna pass through some tabs that are on the cross member, and then, that's what secures this thing to the, the big cross member here. So what I'm gonna do is kind of fit this, get the smaller bolts in to hold the weight, and then we can worry about the bigger bolts uh, once it's all lined up and in its appropriate position. So I kind of have to force it a little bit, use some flangey strength. Where did I put, uh, I just lost the fastener. There it is. That one goes right there. This one's not really lined up right. Okay. Woohoo! Can't tighten those down just yet. Because I still have to get the big ones in. pushing through and then there's a nut on the top side of those big bolts actually two nuts those nuts I can't reach it so hmm. well, it's tight squeeze up there guys how do I yeah I got that one on that's good so we got one one nut in and the second one I gotta get from the front side past the trans cooler, the power steering cooler. 
There we go. Okay, that one's on. So what I'll do, take this wrench, reach around and get a hold of the nut. We'll tighten it from the bottom. Loud noises. And the other one here. Dose click. Now that the big bolts are secure, we can get the little brace bracket bolts bolt tightened down next. What? That was loud. Click. Okay, steering gear is bolted in. Let's reach up, get the shaft on, and then we can install the uh, kill people bolt on the steering shaft here. So I'm just gonna turn that slightly, slip it down and over. It's in position. If you uh, missed it or in the last video, or don't know what I'm talking about. The kill people bolt is the one that secures the shaft from the steering shaft, the steering shaft coupler to the input shaft on the steering gear. You'll notice that it'll go on and it'll function. But if you forget the bolt, there's a possibility and a strong likelihood that that clamp will come off, uh, ultimately disconnecting the steering system from the steering wheel. And if that happens, they wreck and, and they, they become in an accident and there's a risk that you killed them. That's why I call it the kill people bolt. Let's make it tight. One more, a little turn here. Click. We'll point it that way, and that should be centered. Like so. We're done down here on this section of the steering gear. Okay, we have a steering gear, an oil pan, oil filter housing gasket installed. Now we need to get the cross member. Uh, bracket between the two motor mounts installed. Uh, that's just two bolts and uh, and of course the actual cross member. Here we'll take this thing. I have it in hand. Push that up in position. Throw the bolt in it. Do there. And then same right here on the on that side. Now it's hung. 90 degree impact coming in. Some tightness. Another over on the left over there. Sweet. Okay, cross members in. Now we need to back up one more time and we can install the uh, the sway bar over there. And yeah, this one's coming in up and over this control arm. The uh, control arm, the lower on this side over here is not installed yet. So I just need to sort of push this out of the way. Kind of lean it back. Ooh. Okay, this side's got a bolt in, two bolts in. the fastener. It's fine. I'll get it in a second. Come on, go in there. That one's in. You get that other bolt that fell. Put that back on. You guys okay? That was that's pretty nasty spill you took there. Face plant, not ideal. So anyway, let's go ahead and tighten down the, the bolts here. That one.
loud clickage noises. That's for certain. Okay, that's one side, good. And the other side. That re-secures our sway bar and that will have to be attached from this point here to the control arm and the same on the other side once I get that control arm in. So that was the length that I chopped off in the uh, other video. Speaking of control arms, I do believe it's now time to start hanging some more parts here. So this is the upper for the driver's side. Let's get this thing in position here. So this was a bit of a struggle coming out. I'm hoping I can get it to go in with uh, less difficulty. It was getting clearance on that corner over there to fit the stud in. That was, that was the issue here. I may have to employ more pry bar action to make that fit. Yeah, awkward. I'm supposed to know what I'm doing too. Actually, I never made the claim that said I knew what I was doing. I just uh, always stated that this is what I'm going to do. Other people made that claim for me. Hey, we're getting somewhere. I got the stud poking through the hole. Now it's lined up and poking through the hole. Or more lined up, rather. So now I need to get this over top, the, the top stud right here for that strut. Uh, pry bar. Yeah, pry bar. It's just a little bit of pry bar. We're not gonna not gonna have to force it too hard. I need to get around the fender liner, which is Faz Tech. I'm just gonna push with the pry bar. Push. There we go. If asking it nicely doesn't work, hit it with a hammer. So we got both, both studs are in, it's in position. Let's get the nuts threaded on and we can at least tighten this thing out, down into position. You know these little shim aligner tabs here, remember those? These guys slip around I think like so. No, other way? Yeah, the other way. There's holes for the little fingers to line up into. So let me line my finger holes up. Okay, I'm gonna do the other side. That side's not having, not fun. I don't like it. in oh man you guys totally fell I didn't even know sorry horrible so I got that one on there's the nut going together other side why are you falling still gravity is taking over the channel there's the shim on this side stay and the nut for this side. Sweet. Let's see about getting a socket onto that. Hmm. No. Other side? Other side will be no problem. If I recall. in and then this one 
shim fell out again. It's always fun. Put the shim back. Hmm, solution. When your tool doesn't fit in the hole, you just make it longer. Then you can get a better angle for your dangly wobbly bit there and get right after it. A nut fell off. See that? There. So now we may take our wheel speed sensor wire. And we're going to feed that guy back through where it goes. Which is up and to the top of the fender up here. And I can connect it later on when we let the car down. Okay, it's now time for the heavy part. Lower control arms coming in here. So we'll set up the, the big bolt here. We've got to slip this into the groove into the control arm. And then there's the two bolts in the back for the, the rear bushing mount. So, trying to figure out here how to, how to make this maneuvered. Uh, so this thing is wider than the hole, so we need to kind of bring this in at an angle and yeah, turn it like that, that'll work. Okay, big bolt. This big bolt is sort of in. It didn't go through all the way. Let me get those fasteners on the rear to make this thing secure. Don't fall out and put me in the cranium. Ah, ah the nut fell out. Hang on. Okay, threads are started on the back. Big bolts is in more. Now I need to just get the strut lined up with the strut bolt. We can start getting everything secured and fastened down. Okay, out back here. I didn't mean to do that. Please go in. Okay, that one's in. I guess I'll put the, the strut bolts in. Oh no, wait, 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 I got a better idea. I know what to do. Push this up, put that nut on, and then we'll put the strut bolts in right here. See, that's why I stay on the non-plan plan, because you've got to evolve your plan while executing your plan. You don't need that. That's the dust boot little protector cover for the ball joint. It doesn't stay in the car. Uh, that's for shipping transit and things of that nature. I took those off and tossed them once, and someone was like, hey, why are you doing that? You need that on the car, and it's, it doesn't go there. That's just for uh, storage and packing purposes. Okay, big bowl coming through the strut. Everything's a hammer. Even hammers. Hammers are the best hammers. It's right here, that's the, the nut that goes on this side of the strut. We'll tighten that in a moment. All right, let's get this, uh, this thing started a little bit here. I'm definitely keeping my fingers in mind. If this hooks up and snaps around and get your finger caught in there, that could hurt. Clickage, pre-clickage. So around on the back side of the big strut bolt, we've got the big strut nut. Let's get that guy started and spawn on. And before I tighten that down, we're going to go back over there and get the two bolts for the rear bushing. Reaching on back here. Click. And another one on the back. Oh, beautiful. Okay. 
Now we're gonna hit the big nut on the big bolt right here. Once that guy's on, this thing is gonna be nice and secure. We can go ahead and get the spindle hung up. Okay, coming on back with the big gun again onto the big nut. Tight. Okay, time for the somewhat difficult part. We need to go ahead and disconnect the steering knuckle from the straps that are holding it away. We've got to maneuver it and angle it so we can get a hold of this ball joint stud going through that hole right there. And then we'll have to, we'll have to line it up, pick it up, straighten it out, hang it, and then we can move to the top side. So it's kind of like a multi-step process and it's cumbersome and heavy, so bear with me on this one. I am unstrapping the strap. Get that out of the way. Same thing with the bungee cord here. Okay. Uh, where's the nut? I need the big nut for the ball joint. Had to change the angle of that little bit of a ball joint dangle there. It's got to be pointed this way in order to get the clearance for the hole in the knuckle. Okay. Here we go. I've got the weight of the whole bit of business here. Sliding it up. Uh oh. Yeah. There's the nut. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. There we go. Okay, hope you guys caught all that, but the nut, we got the nut on, so now the lower control arm has the weight of the knuckle, so all we need to do is kind of get it lined up up here, and we can slip the upper into the hole here. I might have to pry bar this down. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's gonna take some pry bar. Whoa! Came right at me. Longer pry bar. Or it's gonna be like two stage compounding pry bar. Might have to do that. Trying to get this under the spring somewhere. There. Now I got a hold of it. That's nice. So. Ah, uh, too much. I got a hold of it too much. Undoing. Threads are exposed right there. Got it. Cool. Okay, let's tighten up this upper, then we'll go down below, tighten up the lower. And at that point, we can put the sway bar links on and the tie rod, and this side will be, is going to be good to go. 19 mil. And of course, the uh, the big boy down at the bottom. Let's get that one next. Looks like a 24. Where's the hole at? Oh, right there. 
nearly perfectly aligned. A little bit more though. Too unperfectly aligned, a little bit more. There we go, holes lined up, perfect. Let's get this tie rod in position here. Come here, stud. It's got to point this way. There. Holes lined up. That's good. So that's tight, 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 tight. Those are tight. That's tight. Tight, tight, tight. Yeah. Everybody's tight. I like it. Okie dokie. So I went in and attached the sway bar links. While you guys weren't looking, uh, we're gonna go through and just do like a, a recheck slash recap of everything. Make sure we're all uh, uh, installed properly. So we got a bolt, a bolt, a bolt, a bolt. That one, that one tight, that one tight. Those two are tight, sway bars on, it's linked. Let's see, down below, we have the cross members reinstalled, steering gear is installed, lines are on, uh, that's bolted in, that one's bolted in, these are in, that one's in, that one's in, and all the lowers, or, but everything is uh, cotter pin. So you got a cotter pin, cotter pin, Oil filter housing, that's in place. The pan is on and torqued. Cotter pin, cotter pin. Tight, tight. Uh, those are tight, that's tight. Hoses are routed properly. That's tight, that's tight, that's tight. Wires connected. I think we are pretty good to rock and roll. I'm gonna go ahead, let this down, throw the wheels on it. And uh, we're gonna check uh, ride height and stance and whatnot, but I think we're good to go here. Darling wife unit, yes. would you care to operate the lift controls yes. yeah. on this Mountaineer Explorer Ford Lincoln I Mercury? Laughed. You laugh? I you laughed. can do it. Don't be nervous. Yep. This one. That's the lock release, yeah. And this one. So you hang on, you gotta push that, push the subscribe button. Subscribe. Push it up, hold that one down, pull that down, push this. There you go, now your lock is released. Keep holding that down. Oh. Now take this and push this there, and then watch slow, woman. Ooh. Watch you gotta watch what you're doing. Make sure it doesn't like come down sideways. It's wiggly. Yep, let her down. It's wiggly. <laughs> it's it's kind of jiggly. <laughs> the car, the car is wiggly. That's not good when your car on the lift is wiggly jiggly. It wasn't that much. Oh, okay. Now it's time for uh, first contact here, and there we go on the ground. Oh, good idea. Suspension is settling. I think we're good here. That's together. It's assembled. Visually, they look good. There's no crazy camera angle. They're not towed in or out. Something insane like, so that's good. So now, I need to refill the engine coolant. Remember, we drained it. Need to refill the engine oil. So I'm gonna go break out a couple gallons of uh, 520 AMS oil. That's what I use here. So on this particular uh, vehicle, I'm going to use AMS oil, 100% synthetic OE grade. That's the regular grade oil. Uh, they tier these things up based on additive package. So uh, according to AMS oil's informational website, the OE grade is going to run the uh, the factory or manufacturer's recommendation mileage interval. Now the reason that I mention that is you can also get your oil weight in a uh, like a high mileage and AMS oil claims a 12 to 15,000 mile or actually extended life the extended life will run a 12 to 15,000 mile interval and then you can get into the product uh, like the 6x versions and uh, they're claiming up to 25,000 miles uh, on some of these oils so the theory is is if you equip your vehicle with a, a high enough level of oil you can actually reduce the amount of service visits, uh, saving time, waste, and money, actually. 
we all like saving money. So again, it's one of those situations where you kind of buy once, cry once. Now, I don't have to sell AMSOIL, and I certainly don't have to require my, uh, my customers to use it, but I have a customer base here who's interested in vehicle longevity. Uh, these are not leased vehicles, and people do have a vested interest in them, so they would like to protect their assets with the most premium of lubrication products. And that is why I became an AMSOIL dealer. Additionally, if you would like to get your own AMSOIL products, just visit the link down in this video's description and uh, it will take you to AMSOIL's uh, webpage uh, through my link. And you will be eligible to receive certain promotional discounts like free product and or free shipping uh, if you were to entertain the idea of becoming an AMSOIL preferred customer, uh, which is basically like a wholesale club for oil. So you can buy it for retail price. You can, uh, you can join the club and buy it at a cheaper price. And that's why I chose to become a dealer. That way I can buy it at an even cheaper price and then I can sell it to my store and then I can sell it to my customers, therefore selling them one of the most premium products available at a price point that's comparable with what you're gonna find in a retail environment. And I believe we're right on the money here. So basically, I'm selling really expensive stuff for a moderate price because I can. And that's why I do the things that I do. Let's go ahead and restart this thing real quick. Darling, would you care to do the honors for us? Sure. You run over to the vehicle, pop inside please, and restart the engine. Got a drain plug in it, got an oil pan on it, got a filter on it, oil's in it. Go ahead and fire it up, we're ready to rock and roll. Okay, restart complete. Let's see what we get for a fluid level here. And we are, uh, we're a little bit low, about three quarters of a quart low, need to add some. It's a no problem. A little bit more, three quarters of a quart. That's what we said, right? That should do it. Checking our dipping stick. Since we ran it, the filter is now full. So this is our true measurement. And the survey says right here at the top mark. Good to go. That it's complete. I need to get some coolant in this thing. A little bit of power steering fluid and we are good to go here, guys except for a wheel alignment. We've also got to send it out for the alignment. So, uh, having said all that, I do not believe I have anything more to offer you on this uh, particular Mercury Mountaineer at this time. Uh, we've got to fill it up, top it off, get it off the rack, back it out, and send it down the row ad to get the suspension and wheels geometrically aligned, and that will complete the service visit uh, on this particular Ford Lincoln Mercury product. So guys, having said all that, since I have nothing more to offer you on this video, I'm gonna go ahead and close this one out right now. I will do such things as always by thanking each and every one of you guys for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think about this thing in the comments down below. Do not forget to engage that like and subscribe button while you're down there. And most importantly, you guys do not forget to have yourselves a fantastic day. See you guys later in a video, in a Ford Lincoln Mercury, in a Van Zoll promo, in a moment of shameless self-promotion, in a transmission. Fluids topped off, engine's running, temp's coming up. Let's back her out, wash her off. Encore scenery. Backing out the auto. Safety honks for safety. Hey, look, someone disabled their dash cam, so I don't have to. All right, let's engage the water supply here. Come here, hose. Okay. There we go. There's the business end. Beginning engine cleansing process now. Split some coolant over here. Make it nice and shiny. Wash all the dust and dirt off. Spillages, etc., etc. Ooh, gonna ruin engine. Good to go. See you guys later.